two dudes reviewing the news pop culture video games movies and shoes quincy and justin with a nerdy forecast so stay a while and welcome to the ugly mugs podcast welcome to the egg mugs podcast i'm your host quincy and your other host justin still practicing social distancing um i figured it out we're actually like four and a half miles from each other yeah we we so. we learned this when we were editing the last video yeah um no tea Did for me no no i have an energy drink i'm i'm exhausted but i do have it in a mug oh uh i did tea uh, not tea uh coffee uh it's the vanilla uh starbucks it's their ground coffee i was a little worried because it's the same like run that they did for that caramel one i didn't like and this one does kind of suffer from the same thing where there's almost something chemical about it but it is oh. a lot better. The grounds smell amazing. It smells amazing when it's brewing. It even tastes pretty good. It's when it starts to cool down that it becomes an issue. Uh, okay, so what you're saying is do not do an iced coffee. Yeah, I don't think this would be good for an iced coffee. <laughs> there's just something weird that happens with they, with these flavored ones that they did. Um, whatever process they go through to add those flavors kind of fucks it up. I don't understand. Oh. Um... Yeah, no, just a Mountain Dew kickstart. That's all I'm rocking right now. Uh, well, I understand you being tired. You're essential. You're still working. Yes, uh, but I do have a movie review. Ooh, what'd you watch? Onward. Because it oh, was... I haven't seen it yet, so no spoilers. No spoiler spoilers. Spoiler-free review. Spoiler review. <laughs> um, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland. Uh, it's a very heartwarming story, you know, about troll or not trolls, uh, elves doing elf things. Um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Got a tear out of me. Um, other than oh, that, wow. it it was, it was a good heartwarming story with heartwarming ending. I'm glad. I really want to see it. We just haven't actually sat down yet. I'm still working, so um, I, I feel like something about her not working and me working is really screwing up are socializing if that makes sense i mean I, you're you got one more month to deal with this i'm sure you'll be fine possibly one more month uh no i'm not worried about this i'm just saying like it's become like this weird thing where it's like i'm sleeping more than i should because she has more energy than normal so she's staying up and so i'm staying up to try to spend time with her because i don't spend time with her during the day because i'm working and so now we like i've reached this point of I'm staying up till 4 a.m. and sleeping way later than I need to. Ah, um, that's okay. I get it. And then when I when I am home, it's like I don't necessarily want to start anything. I want to focus on it. She's watching wrestling or watching The Simpsons or something like that. Oh, okay. Because I'm just I'm drained and I'm just sitting there. <laughs> okay, but uh, onward is good. I I think you'll like it. Okay. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. It looked really funny. I wanted to see it in theaters, and I'm very upset that, you know, all this has happened and ruined that. Definitely not the worst thing that's happened because of all this, obviously. There's, you know, people dying and stuff like that. Yeah. But you know, it's just one of those little things. It's like, well, that's a bummer. But, I mean, I'm glad that they still put it into a place where people can watch it. Sure, it's not the best idea in the world, but... I mean... What can you do? Just... They could have boxed it back up and be like, no one gets to see it. Until yeah. until everyone gets better. Yeah, so likely they didn't do that. They they gave us something new to watch. Yeah. And, and uh, a lot of companies are doing that. They're putting a lot of stuff out to try to keep people occupied. I might watch Frozen Two. Maybe. I didn't get the hype for Frozen One. I finally watched it a couple of years back because everyone had been yelling at me and it had even become like a thing where it's like, You didn't watch Frozen One, your niece is gonna be so disappointed. So we're like, okay, we'll watch Frozen 1. And then I watched it. I was like, There's... why the fuck does everyone love this movie so much? Like, it was okay. It wasn't bad. It didn't do anything outrageous. I concur. But it, I can see the appeal for the youth, for the youngins. Yeah. And maybe, you know, that's where I'm, I'm losing. I've got that disconnect because I'm not a kid anymore. Despite how much I act like one. <laughs> but yeah, so Frozen 2, not high on my list of... Yeah. I might eventually. I don't know if I run out of stuff to watch. <laughs> um, 
there's a couple Disney movies people are, are mad at me for not watching though. Like I haven't seen Tangled. Oh, I love Tangled. Tangled is one of my favorites. And I haven't seen Moana. Well, really? Yeah. Despite it having The Rock, I know I should be watching it for The Rock, but yeah, I haven't seen either one of those. Hmm. I haven't I haven't really been playing too many outside video games. Uh, when I was streaming, I mostly played Forza and Cuisine Royale. Oh, so uh-huh. I learned something annoying. You know how we did the whole home network thing? Uh-huh. Um, I lost internet last night for a little bit oh. and found out I can't play anything I bought digitally because you're my home console. Uh, what? Yeah, no. It, it can't prove ownership uh, without internet connection. Oh, okay, because it did the same thing to me when I, when my internet went out for that brief three hours yeah it's like we can't prove ownership you need to play this xbox often make it your home console i'm like yeah I, I, th- I think it's just a hiccup for when there's no internet yeah so it's only with, without internet and i was like well all right i own plenty of physical games but it's like i was trying to play red dead yeah um i have played a few new things so I've, I've been playing red dead too um i've been playing assassin's creed odyssey both really good um and i've been playing jedi fallen order um, I'm gonna do a review on Fallen Order. Lay it on me. It's I haven't finished the game. Okay. I'm pretty far into it though. It's enjoyable. My gripe is that you're going from planet to planet, and while it's a big area because it's like this area where it's like a lot of stuff you won't be able to get to until you get other powers and come back and stuff like that. They're not very big areas. You're like in one small town each time you go to each planet. It's like these are vast planets. Okay, I would have liked I, the game to be a little bigger, if I, that makes sense. I mean, I get it. I heard it's basically a Dark Souls, but with a skin of Star Wars. Yeah, um, it's definitely difficult. I wouldn't say it's Dark Souls difficult. Oh. I mean, once you learn it and stuff like that, it's not Dark Souls difficult by any means. Um, and I'm not playing on Grandmaster. I'm just playing on the one right underneath that, but it's still pretty high difficulty. And there are definitely things that just keep kicking my ass, but once you get better at the fighting and learn certain moves and stuff like that, you can pretty much beat anything no matter what powers you have, as long as you're really good at the parrying and the dodging. You know what? Speaking of parrying and dodging, uh, there was a game that I streamed for a brief moment that just came back into my mind. Uh, the Surge 2. Oh, okay. Yeah, the one they just added to Game Pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's very fun, but... Boy, oh boy, are the mechanics very strange. Like, I like it. I'm probably going to go back to it, but... Ooh, it's it's one that will be a teeth grinder for later. Yeah, I don't feel like the uh, Fallen Order is like that. My friend James says it was really difficult for him, but I, I think it's... I think maybe it's the fact that this game kind of fits in my wheelhouse of what I'm good at that mm. makes it maybe a little bit easier for me. Um, enemies turn red when it's a, an attack you can't block or parry you know things like that um it is fun it is great for the lore uh i feel like there's a couple spots where they kind of dialed things back and they shouldn't have like as you learn things about creatures and about the area around you you can go back and read like your notes on it but like i'm finding like there's moments where you like you tap into the force and hear what happened like because there was like such a drastic like death or something like that it's left like an imprint Oh. And you use the force to listen to it. But then it just makes a little note that you can go back and read. You can't go back and re-listen to it. Oh, like it doesn't is, it doesn't like save in any of your like files or anything like that. It's just a yeah, one time. It just puts a little note in your file about it. That's it. Oh. The other thing, um, I don't know if it's because my console's so full. I don't know if it's because I'm on console and not PC, but the texture on the game fucks up quite often uh who, um, who made it i know it's ea but i want to know what company uh respawn respawn they did titanfall titanfall wasn't bad and i don't remember seeing any broken so problems on like ps4 so like nothing is broken in game like the game hasn't broken it's uh, just every now and again a couple textures won't load in for a little bit yeah like there was something I was standing on at one point and it just looked 
like it was drawn with crayons almost like it didn't have the final textures on it um or like there was one point where like one of the walls clipped a little bit um but mostly it's like you see like the color pattern on the item but you don't see the final touches on the item oh and it's like it's nothing breaking the game but it's like why is that happening like that shouldn't be happening so hmm. well i mean it's not game breaking so that to me it it doesn't seem like it's going to it's going to pull me out in immersion but i don't think it'll pull me out from playing the game yeah no it definitely didn't break the game the game hasn't crashed on me at all i haven't had any enemies clipped to where it's like oh you can't kill them or anything like that um like i said i haven't finished it yet one thing that's pissing me off and i'm assuming because your guy was a padawan when order 66 happened like he was maybe a little bit past the padawan uh yeah and the uh, and the guy teaching them is voiced by travis willingham okay um sorry no you're fine uh They've got a great cast for this because they've also got Misty Lee, Paul Dini's wife. Oh. Um, all kinds of people in this one. Uh, I mean, Forrest Whitaker shows up to voice his character from uh, uh, Rogue One because this is long before Rogue One. Oh, oh really? Yeah, because this is only a couple of years within like a couple of years of Order 66. Wow. Um, and Rogue One wouldn't be like another like 18 years um after order 66 because rogue one happens right uh, at the beginning of a new hope so that means it's been at least however old luke is at that point luke and leia are at that point that many years since order 66 um but oh yeah so like he has to like every now and then tap into like the force and it reminds him of something from his training because he's kind of like when Order 66 happened, he kind of got dislodged from the force a little bit and lost some of his abilities. So you're, he's relearning things. Okay. Which is cool, but I'm like three or four planets in and there ain't no fucking double jump. <laughs> oh, geez. And I'm like, Jedi's jump far as fuck. And there's a lot of little jumps that you're supposed to make that I'm like just barely missing. And I'm like, if I had double jump, I would be able to save myself from this. <sighs> Or just like a bigger jump, a stronger jump, something. It's like Jedi's jump far as fuck all the time. So that was a little weird. Seems uh, like... Other than that, I like the game. Okay. The I'm, I'm probably going to grab it. I'm probably the good. ship's cool. The lightsaber's customizable. You unlock parts for it. You meet a cute droid Ew. that buddies up with you. Uh, called BD-1. Um, he's a little scrapper. You can talk to him. like You can check in on him because he rides on your back. Oh. And if you press down on the D-pad, he's just like, how you doing back there? And he BB-1 beeps back to you, and you're like, okay, just checking on you and stuff like that. Oh. Um, it's definitely one of those games that really, like, really tries to get you to come back to other areas to discover more stuff. Like, you have to come back to the planets later on. Um, but I feel like the fact that almost all the collectibles in the game are just I have not even almost all the collectibles in the game are cosmetic based. That's not enough to make you want to go back. Really? Okay. Unless you're like a completionist. Like I'm a completionist, so I'm going to do it. But, but it's like, that's the only there's reason. There's no, yeah, there's no stronger weapons or anything like that. Cause it's like, you have a lightsaber. That's what you use because you're a Jedi. Um, but other than that, everything's great. You know, the great voice acting the ship looks great. Um, the fact that you can customize clothing and stuff like that is cool. Is there a Jedi um, that uses guns? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I guess that depends on what you classify a Jedi as, but really, no. Oh. Um, there are Force users that use guns. That would be my argument. Okay. Um, it, it, it was just a curiosity, if you will. Yeah, no, it's not really a, a thing. Uh, it definitely pulled controls from like Force Unleashed because you have to hit the the block button at the right moment to shoot the bolts back at the stormtroopers and stuff otherwise you're just deflecting them um but i also feel like a lot of controls were pulled from things like assassin's creed like the newer assassin's creed yes, not yes. the old um or i've even felt a little bit of things in this that are um a little bit even older assassin's creed at some points one thing i don't like is there's things you can climb like vents vines stuff like that if you jump on it he kind of hangs on the wall for a second and then falls you have to 
press in left trigger as you come in contact with the wall or before he falls, and then he'll grab. And you can let go of left trigger after that and then just climb around until you have to you know, climb up or jump to the next section and then hit left trigger. But he doesn't automatically grab onto the, the climbable objects. And I'm like, why would you do that? Yeah, why would you do that? So I definitely suggest people get it. Um, don't go and spend a bunch of money on the special edition, which I didn't do. Um, because the special edition literally just comes with more cosmetics. It doesn't come with anything extra to the game. Not a single thing? No, it's all cosmetics. No new missions, uh, no stronger weapons, nothing like that. It's just cosmetics. Oh. Well, that's unhelpful. Yeah, but it's uh, the game's already down to about 40 bucks everywhere, and then it's been on sale on Xbox recently. And that's how I got it. Oh, that's not bad. So if you guys want to go out and get it, I got mine... I think the final price was 25 was the sale price, and then I had a $10 credit on my Xbox, so I got it for 15 Hmm. That certainly works, then. Uh, remember last week when I talked about um, the Conquer COVID-19 bundle from Humble Bundle? Mm-hmm. They raised over $5 million. That's amazing. That's great. Um, aside from that... It, it went over well. I gave away a few keys from it. I still have more to give away from it. Um, but seeing as we're on the subject of Humble Bundle that I've kind of nudged into, uh, the no, uh, uh, what do they call it? Humble Bundle choice for this month. Um, it the the front runner for it is Hitman Two, which you said wasn't too stellar, but you still enjoyed. Yeah, I I definitely enjoyed. Um, I felt. The story got rushed and wrapped up in a way it shouldn't have, and I'm wondering if that's because it changed developers. Um, other than that, that the maps are really big. Uh, they put a lot of thought into the way you can do everything. They did some nice stuff for the holidays. They did a lot of free content for it. Um, so it was it was enjoyable. Okay. Um, the other games are ones that I think you might actually like, such as This Is the Police Two. Yeah, I enjoyed the first one, so the second one I'm definitely interested in. Uh, Trooper Brook, which is a sci-fi mystery graphic adventure, which talks yeah. about... Um, Just the thumbnail looks interesting. Yeah. Uh, it basically... Uh, a man comes to a town in Germany during, uh, I think, post-World War II. Don't quote me on that. But he go gets there, and everyone already knows his name. Everyone already knows why he's there. Um, he feels this strange inkling to keep digging into this mysterious past and so on and so on and so on. And then there's something that brought me back to my past that I immediately grabbed with uh, Turok 2, Seeds of Evil. Is that the one that was on the 64? Uh, yes. I had that game. I loved that game, and I hate myself for selling it back when I was a dumbass kid that sold all their 64 games. A Lamo. Um... The game that got best visuals of 2019, uh, Greece or Greece, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's a very pretty platformy puzzle, light actiony game. Um, it is very pretty. I, I'm gonna probably grab that one. Uh, Opus Magnum, which is a hex-based city simulator action. No, no, I don't want to call it action. Like a puzzle build type of game. It's a very strange genre. It sounds like it. Um like it, it you you see all the buildings around and you got to connect them through runes or s mechanics of a sort. It's a very high mechanic game. I don't think I'm going to grab this. Me me small brain. Me me small brain. Uh another yeah, it seems like a weird one. Yeah, another mechanic style game called Molek Sintez which um, it uses chemical. I don't want to call it chemical because I don't think it's... I think they're molecular structure, but I don't think it's real molecular structure. Um, holy crap. Oh, no, it is It is actual chemical compounds. Um, cool. So you basically need to learn actual chemical compounds to beat this game. No, 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 no. Uh, it's made by Zachtronic, so he, he, him, big, huge, galaxy brain. 
try and teach other big galaxy brains. I mean, I guess it'd be a cool way to learn shit. I, I mean, I don't know how it'll teach you when it has... Mm, I don't know how this works. Uh, next up on the list is a shoot-em-up called Raiden 5. Um, if you've ever played uh, Ikaruga, Toho, or even one of the regular like 1949s, uh, this is right up the alley. Just keep shooting. Do not stop shooting. Like a bullet hell type it, of thing. It or? is a it is a bullet hell type of thing. It is very pretty. Um, I don't know what the difference between this one and director's cut, but good news, you get the director's cut. All right. Um, Driftland: The Magic Revival is a, a city builder that kind of goes into mythicism meets risk, and <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, it's a, it's a pretty game. Like, you're on floating islands, you gotta make sure that you're claiming areas that are inside these crystals, so that way you're not building in dangerous lands, etc, etc. Um, I'll probably grab it just because I have ten choices, and there's not many that I'm not gonna take. Like, the next one I'm definitely not gonna take, which is Capitalism 2. Yeah, I saw that. What What is that? It looks like SimCity. It looks legit like Sim City. I wish I was joking. The I only want a new Sim City at this point. Like fuck all these clones. Like yeah, this one doesn't look like a good variant of Sim City because you have to control what each thing is selling, I guess. And it doesn't look great. It looks like it's made from the year like 2000, maybe prior. Oh, fun. <laughs> yeah, it does not look good. Um. I'm not too I'm not too keen on that. Uh did the Shopkeep 2. Uh Socks was playing the original Shopkeep. It doesn't look very fancy, but it does have its moments from what she was saying for the first one. Um I don't I, I'll probably throw it on there so that way she can grab it, but uh it looks like a grand old time if you're wanting to be a Shopkeep. Uh, it's not my cup, but it's her cup. It's you know, yeah. it's a cup. <laughs> it's a cup that ain't mine. It's a mug that ain't mine. So the last one here. Yes. I see the other parts of this franchise everywhere. Everyone's I... giving them for free or on sale. And this, this like one's a brand new. Big franchise. This is a this is a brand new one. Uh, this one was released, I believe. I'm gonna double check on it, but not too too long ago. And um, uh, 2019. August twenty seventh, twenty nineteen. Okay, yeah, so not even a not even a year yet. No. Um, but it looks good and it's called the Bard's Tale Four Director's Cut. And this one tries to push that, you know, it has over a hundred pieces of incredible music, a legacy mo mode for returning fans, a lot of speaking parts, about fifty hours plus of gameplay, and so many different ways of playing it. Create the hero you wanna be, um, do this, this, that as far as um Play the song to skip mandatory puzzles in case you don't feel like doing puzzles, but more combat or vice versa. I like puzzles. Yeah, but some people want to just have combat. Some people play Dungeons and Dragons just to do combat. Oh, that, that's something I will say about um, Fallen uh, Fallen Order. It's mm -hmm. got some decent puzzles. Okay, good. They're but... not like super difficult. It's just kind of like. No, oh, figure out all this stuff to unlock the next part of the room, and it's like okay, move this big ball, a uh, big uh, rolling ball around, and shit like that. Yeah. So I mean, I at least have the ten games I'm gonna grab. The only downside is numbers nine and ten are gonna be kind of thrown at someone else. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, let's see, Hitman Two, I'll probably give away because I already have it through Xbox, and none of my none of my shared friends are gonna be really wanting it. Uh, mm -hmm. Grease, definitely going to throw on there. This is the Police 2, definitely going to throw on there. Uh, Bard's Tale 4, definitely going to throw on there. Trooper Book, definitely going to throw on there. That's five games already handled. Turok 2, I have already added onto my Steam and downloaded. Shopkeep 2 for Socks. Raiden 5 for me, I guess, later on in life. That leaves two. And... Uh, the last four aren't really appealing in any way, shape, or form to me. So, I mean, I guess I'll have them out and about until someone says, hey, that looks interesting to me. And Sorry, I'll... what are the last four? Uh, Malik Sintes, wow. Driftland, mm -hmm. Capitalism 2, and Opus Magnum. 
I figure if it comes down to it and you just want to claim them because no one's going with anything, probably at least Driftland. At least Driftland, but the the last the the last three, I got nothing. I'll probably look at my my Steam list of friends to see who wants one of these, mm-hmm. and then I'll just throw it at him. Be like, here you go. Happy birthmas. Happy Merry Christmas. Merry Chrysler. <laughs> Merry Chrysler. I mean, they've got some pretty good ones on there, though. Oh, so yeah. The fact that it came down to the you, you had two spots left and the last four were kind of, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. And, I mean, that's a pretty big bundle. Yeah. Uh, shall we continue talking about games given away or for inexpensive? Yeah, let's go with game sales and free games for now. I have, Ep- uh, you have half of Epics. I've got the other half. So what's currently free on Epic? So one that I've been looking at for a long time called Close to the Sun. I'm shocked that they gave this one away. This one didn't come out too long ago. Um, but I, I'm super hyped. Close to the Sun is a Bioshock-esque clone mm-hmm. that leans more toward the ineffectivity of combat because you're I don't want to say you know women can't be strong but you don't have much you you are going up against things that is destructive against you and will kill you or will aim to kill you uh and crimes and punishment Sherlock Holmes which I have that one never actually played it oh well both of those are free and then Next week, starting on the 16th, uh, is... I come in. That's where you come in. Let's see, I have it... You can do it, buddy. Where'd it go? I mean, I have it right here, too. It's right there. I got it. Okay. 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 Just Cause 4, so that you can, you know, break everything, including the game. Well, no, that was Just Cause 3. <laughs> just Cause 4 might actually work. <laughs> might. We haven't might. tried. <laughs> um, and Wheels of Aurelia? Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about Wheels of Aurelia. Uh, Wheels of Aurelia is a story-based driving game that kind of plays like um, Matchbox Racers, where it has that top-down isometric view. And there's a story that kind of goes along with it, where you play someone who drives from country to country doing various tasks. It's very... It's very on the nose of what it wants to be, like a detective drama type of thing, but set solely in a car. All right. That's... It's interesting, well, to say the least. that sounds kind of cool. I love the art style. The art style is my fucking go-to. Like, yeah, it's, a, it's a very, very pretty game. It's an interesting one. So, I mean, Just Cause 4, it, it's one of those games where it's like people love it or hate it. You know, like there's no real middle ground. I haven't experienced it, so I can't say how I feel about it. Mm. Um, and then with uh, the wheels one, I mean, just hearing you saying a little bit about it, I and mean, that sounds kind of cool. I don't know if I would necessarily play it, but I can definitely see the appeal. Oh, yeah. Uh, so. I would say take a take a peek at the trailer. At least get your judgment from the trailer later on. Mm hmm. Uh, um, I don't think I played Crime and Punishment. Oh. I played one of them. I don't know which one I played now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, Um, I want to say you played Devil's Daughter, yeah? I did, yeah. Devil's Daughter. That's the one I played. Okay. Uh, And then we have Game Pass with two new ones for console, which is Alvestia Chronicles and Journey to the Savage Planet. Uh, another one that I had my eye on was Journey to the Savage Planet. Uh, let me look that one up because I don't know which one that is either. It's a first person that I believe you can play multiplayer. Um, you basically, it's No Man's Sky, but better from what some people are saying, such as you can go to other worlds and eat weird purple goo that can taste like whatever your heart's desire. This looks kind of cool. It looks a little uh, Outer Worlds esque. A little bit. A little really bit. Really weird eyed monsters. Yeah, <laughs> you got the bug eyed birds and all that nonsense. This but, looks um, fun. Is it? Is this PC or console? Did you say it, was it PC? is. It is. No, it is for console. Oh, console. Okay. Yeah, PC gets a whole different set, except for Alvestia Chronicles comes over to the PC, 
Alien Isolation, Stranger Things, The Game 3, Missed Over, and Football Manager 2020. All right. Um, I've played Aliens Isolation. Really I good. I fucking love it. Um, and there's actually a Game Pass quest for it right now. And it's like avoid the alien for like 10 minutes straight or some shit like that. Now, wait, did, does that mean that the alien has to already be on board? Or can you just start the game from the very beginning? I'm assuming it's like uh, a moment where it's one of those moments in the game where you are hiding from the alien. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, then play it on easy. Get the achievement <laughs> super quick. Yeah, I get that. I think it's 10 points on the game uh, from that one. That's it might be 50. Little... God, I'm hoping it's know. 50. If you're, if you're having to hide from me. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Can I go on a little bit of a tangent? I mean, of course, that's what we do here. Okay. Uh, I don't really support very much on Kickstarter, but I'm actually leaning toward supporting something on Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Uh, it is called the Griffin's Saddlebag, made by a person named Griffin. And okay. he basically makes uh, magic items for D and D fifth edition and all of the, all of the items that he threw onto uh, Instagram or Twitter, either or uh, are very, very interesting. And it made me go, oh, I actually have one of his items in my current campaign. Woo! Um, I want the physical book. I, I would love to throw money at this to get the physical book downside 35 hours to go. So how much does he still need? Um, he's well over, say, so 19, 20, uh, about 600% over his goal. Oh, Six thousand, okay. no, 6,000%. Wait, 10, 10, 10, 10, so 600. I know math. Yeah, it's 6,000%. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. It's yeah. just, you're saying with the 35 hours, are you talking like you don't have the money right now? Or are you talking, uh... uh... I mean, to get the, the, the hardcover book, probably not, but I might throw the 20 to get the PDF, so that we at least have the PDF. Well, I'm wondering if when he makes, like, I'm wondering if now that he's succeeded, if he's going to make it something people can just buy, and then maybe you can get it at a later date. Uh, I'm open. Honestly. Maybe look a little bit into it, because he's actually got some cool stuff. I've got a, a mask um, for my character that Ma basically... Mask of the Pack Bearer? No, it's not that one. Okay. Um, It's a different one. It kind of gives you, like bard abilities um, oh. bard. um depending on what you do while wearing the mask because it's like the drama and comedy mask oh. so depending on what you do the masks uh, mask adjusts to your uh to what you do whether it's a good thing or a bad thing and basically one of them is like a buff um for certain like attacks i think and the other one's a uh like to protect you like one or the other type of thing mm -hmm. um I don't remember the exact details, and my phone's almost dead, so I can't pull it up right now. Gotcha. But it's kind of cool. Okay. But, and to uh, answer the question about the alien isolation thing, it's 20 minutes. Avoid the alien for 20 minutes, but it's 75 points. Okay. That's not too bad. Now, wait, can you fight it? Or, I, I, I mean, I'm sure there's stipulations. But uh, back, back over to the uh, Kickstarter campaign. 365 items. That's a lot of items to create. It is. Um... I feel like you could do something like that, though. Like, you've got a lot of ideas like that. Uh, not 365. I got maybe 40, 50, where I can help make a supplement. Um, I'm still kind of working out the kinks for the last draft, and I'm going to see if I can't, like, finalize and then publish it on, like, DM's Guild or something, or Cobalt uh, Fight Club. Um, so that way I can at least get a little bit of notoriety in the... D, D universe you know uh if you go to his website the griffin saddlebags website mm -hmm. um you can get the official book mm -hmm. and bonus content he's also got the deck of many now uh now available um uh, printed actual printed cards yeah, yeah i saw that so that's 21.99 that's pretty cool yeah i would i would love to definitely throw the 40 out there so that way i can get the hardcover book the only weird thing is i want the um the uh variant cover the dark copper with the gold inlay i would love that one instead of the colorful but that one costs uh, 130 yeah the deluxe book is 130 for that one 
Um, what's very interesting is that all of his items are in detailed charts for quick reference, so that way you could be like, fuck, these guys found something, they, you know, they worked hard to get something, I gotta grab something quick. Look, it's color-coded, so you just look at a color and go, I want that one, we'll give it to them. You know, you don't have to go doing all these weird dice rolls, oh, wait a minute, he has loot tables for everything like that, too. I love a really good table. And, God, he's got... Uh, A through, I think, G with different option sets. So that way you don't have to say, okay, just this one. No, you can say option one for the, the quick and simple. And option two for a little bit more rare or harder to acquire things. And, I mean, Jesus Christ, you roll a D100. You never roll a D100 anymore. It's always D20s or, or something smaller. Yeah, I feel like my 100 never gets to see the light of day. No. Like, I, I still pull it out with the rest of my dice because it doesn't seem right to just leave it hidden away, but I, I don't feel like it gets the love it needs. Yeah. Um, and what sucks is the Griffin saddlebag, um, the actual saddlebag, is uh, a part of the $1,000, or the $200 tier, I'm sorry, and uh, it comes with all the card packs, all this, this, that. The only downside is it's like, I'm close. I'm really close to slamming down the two hundred dollars, just for just for the fucking bag. Because you want the bag. I want the bag, but I, a really nice bag. It's a, it. I mean, it looks like it's faux leather, stitched, inlaid, kind of like a um, I don't want to call it a bag of holding. What is that smaller one? Handy haversack, almost similar. Okay. Because it's just one big one big pouch, and it, I mean, it doesn't look like it holds a lot per se it doesn't look like my shoulder bag that i have but i mean it's very nice looking it's something that i would definitely put up on my wall but for two hundred dollars that's uh, you know i mean two hundred dollars is something you'd put on your wall rather than actually use that's kind of where you have to weigh it in at that's what i am weighing it at. so <sighs> so i would definitely i'm probably gonna try and see if i can't scrap it together at least the 20 so i can get the the pdf um, but be aware you guys only have 37 hours left, 35 hours left. So and that's at 8.09 PM on April 9th, uh, Pacific standard time, Pacific standard time. Yes. yes. Thank you. So holy crap. And I mean, he's already, he's already made his money. He's looking good and I'm good looking. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, um, I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad that people are able to do things like this. And first of all, they're able to do things like this without uh, freaking like Wizard of the Coast being assholes. Like Wizard of the Coast is actually really cool about it. Oh, um, they they love hearing about anything anyone has. Like um, Ryan Murphy, who does uh, not another D and D podcast. He kind of is leaning toward um, making a book for Bohemia, which is his. Um, homebrew area mm -hmm. and I'm like yo I would love to have a campaign in Bohemia that shit's crazy it's it, it's a very entertaining campaign but also it's very it's it's very outworldish to have a halfway cult whenever someone goes oh that's this is ridiculous and then the cult goes this is ridiculous this is ridiculous <laughs> you know it's it's the small things that that build his campaign that make it so enjoyable. Having a legendary he hero have a children's book and having that children's book teach their PCs how to read, you know, it's it, it's the small things that build the bigger picture. And I, I like that sort of stuff, especially with it being as crazy as it is. Yeah, people come up with some awesome shit there's something i eventually want to play i've told you about it i don't know if i've talked about it on the podcast but i've told you about it where it took like a lot of like the warlock stuff to kind of make it work but someone invented like a living cartoon like oh you play yeah as yeah a living cartoon yeah i saw that and then i showed you soon after the um muppet yeah the muppet class oh now that's that's some amazing stuff yeah and then um they uh, i just saw through some homebrew there was way of the bat which is a monk subclass that basically makes you batman Ooh. 
Well, I'll, I'll see if I can't find it later on to show you. But um, there is a lot of homebrew stuff that is probably going to see the light of day in actuality, considering you've got Matthew fucking Mercer making two books, and both of them are very well received. I have my Teldore guide right over here with with hot pages in them, with uh, uh, sticky notes, bookmarking where I need to open up to because I want to keep either reading about it or throw it into my personal campaign. I really want to get the um, the new one. The uh, Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount, just because that that's more for politics, though. That has a lot of heavy politics and a time of war, you know. You're gonna suffer from the same thing that uh, the Star Wars prequels suffered from. <laughs> Too much politics. Kind of. Like their politics is more along the lines of. It's only affecting this one general region and kind of infecting outwards. Like, um, there's a town in Wild Mount, or in the areas of Wild Mount called uh, Felderwin that just was being attacked because food was not being distributed properly. Goblins attacked that small town of Felderwin, took one PC that is in critical role, and kind of abused them into changing into a goblin, and that's how we got Not the Brave. You know, it it's a lot of very, and oh, especially later on in that same campaign, there is a heavy-handed politic of, this is the way of our people. We don't, we don't see a hierarchy. We see a regular democracy like anyone else would because we care about our people. And then meanwhile, you have the empire that's mainly a, no, 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 this is how it is. Rules have to be followed. And then the contrasting ideas that each governing faction has. I like it, but yeah, it's a bit I also too much. Feel of like, I feel like the, the things like that also kind of help people who aren't good at setting backstories for their characters. If there's already so much set for like the way your people are or the way the politics of your people are, things like that, it kind of helps people get in the mindset of their character. Oh, yeah. Um, I did find my mask. So it is from Griffin Saddlebag. It's the uh, Visage of Delight and Disaster. That's a nice um, name. Delight, if you inspire a creature with joyful and uplifting performance, the creature has advantage on saving throws to resist becoming frightened for one minute following your performance. In addition, when the creature uses a bardic inspiration die, it gains temporary hit points equal to, the, uh, equal to twice the amount they rolled on the die. Holy crap. Disaster, if you inspire a creature with grim or haunting performance, the creature has advantage on saving throws to resist becoming charmed for one minute following your performance. In addition, when the creature hits a target with a weapon attack, it can expand uh, it can expend a bardic expiration die to deal physical damage to the target in addition to the weapon's damage. The extra damage is twice the number rolled on the bardic inspiration die. That's really strong. Yeah. Um... The expression of the mask does subtly, uh, subtly change to reflect the expression of your mouse movements behind the mask, and you know also the fact that it's got the the happy or the sad. Hmm. Okay, so it's really cool. I it, could fuck with that. That is a good item. And the happy side is like gold. The uh, sad side is like a grayish color. You have to be wearing the mask though. You can't just be like, oh, I have the mask in my bag. You know, you have to have the mask on your face for it to work. So my character. He's got it tied back behind his head, and he's got the mask sitting on top of his head so that he can pull it down if a fight starts. That's actually good. That's a good... So. Yeah. All right. I... Oh, man. I'm, I'm going to probably do it. I'm going to probably throw it for the uh, <laughs> PDF. At least for the PDF? Yeah. Well, maybe later on in life, you can get the money together and get the, the hard cap. Physical? Yeah. I just hope that I can get the uh, the exclusive. The only downside is the word exclusive. Uh, yeah, that's always scary, especially when people buy the exclusives just to sell them at higher prices because they're assholes. Yeah. <sighs> Let's move on to some more gaming news. Sure. What you um, want to hit? I'll hit with some sad news, and then maybe you can hit with something. Okay, I got I got some good. Shipments of the Nintendo Switch console to Japan have been suspended because disruptions in Nintendo's supply chain. Um, the company cannot meet the demands of that country. Wow. Uh, 
Nintendo's most recent quarterly report said that it had sold uh, more than 52 million Switches. Um, and that's since uh, March of 2017. So, that, with, but, but that makes me uh, wonder, like, you, you knew this was going to happen. You push out a Pokemon game or a Animal Crossing game, you're going to need to be expecting to, you know, I'm forward. wondering how much of this is coronavirus infected and they're just not saying uh, that is possible you know for instance like if you order anything on Amazon right now they're warning you your shipments are going to take extra long because we're focusing on specific things right now yeah your shit goes kind of back burner so I'm wondering if maybe one they're having troubles uh, getting supplies because they say it's disruption to Nintendo's supply chain. So I'm wondering if they're getting having trouble getting supplies because maybe a material they use is being used for something else, also something hospital based or something. Mm, okay, yeah, I can I can see that. But then again, they just hired a whole bunch of people. I'm not saying that it's forced that all of their people that they've hired yeah. is in, you know. They are saying shipments to the United States and Europe will continue though. Um, okay. I also don't know how different the console is in Japan versus anywhere else, because like, for instance, you can't watch an American movie on a European DVD player and vice versa. It's different. Mm. Uh, there's different region like, coatings, locking. Re yeah, region locking, stuff like that. So I'm wondering if maybe something that they need for the to meet Japan's either circuits or the technology for their region locking or whatever the case is. They're not exactly coming out and saying what it is. They just say it's a supply chain thing. So, Japan people, sorry guys. Oh. You get to live your life like me, switchless. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But I, I really want to switch. I want to get Animal Crossing so bad. so bad. I just want Breath of the Wild, dude. I Breath know you're not Wild a huge too. Legend fan. I mean, I'll, I would love to play it too. I would love to play a lot of things that are coming out specifically for the Switch. Animal Crossing, Have you Pokemon. Seen the map size for Breath of the Wild? It's it's insane. it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Now you hit us with some good news, and then I'll come back with another kind okay. of sad one. <laughs> okay. Um. So I just showed you one of the two trailers for Legends of Runeterra, which was yes. the uh, Freljord, which had Brom, the big man with the shield that I have tattooed on my arm. What I love in that trailer is, you know, it's too late. Don't do it. Don't save me. Protect her. Raise her. Or Sorry, protect him. Raise him. And he basically goes, Nah, I ain't raising no fucking kid. I'm gonna save your ass. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. He is a, well in in lore. Uh, Brom is a, a hero of Freljord, as normal. He ripped that door off of a vault, and because it was indestructible, and so he decided to use it and all that. He is supposed to be a demigod because he was a folk tale. He was not a physical being until something happened is it's very it's very wishy-washy with the the way the old lore worked but i mean i was glad to see more brahm i do enjoy him as much as he still needs buffs but and... yeah, it was a very interesting trailer i enjoyed it not even being a league person yeah. um but you had commented about how they're putting a lot of work for the card game, because this is for the card game, right? This is specifically for the card game. Okay. Um, they have another one for Demacia that has uh, two children sneaking into the Demacian barracks and acting as if they are Garen and Fiora, who are two League of Legends champions, and, um, you know, about how glory, etc., etc., um... I I thoroughly enjoy the world they're building right now and how much they're pushing toward these animations because that animation, fucking beautiful. So it, I had one complaint. Go on. What are they fighting in that? Um, they... If I'm not mistaken, that is things from the Shadow Isles because okay. the Shadow Isles wants to infect everything. Kind it of. totally looks like the thing from Warframe. <laughs> Oh, kind of. They kind of do look <laughs> like, um... Oh, God, what the fuck are they called? I don't remember, but I was looking at it, I was like, that looks like Warframe. <laughs> yeah, a little like, bit. A little bit. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I can see it, but luckily, no. It It's... It's... Hopefully their own design. I hope they're not stealing designs. Um, it was mostly just the head. Yeah. 
so um but i'm i'm excited to see more animations from them because they have they have so much lore in just the cards themselves mm -hmm. uh such as uh one of the cards subtext is for what is her name Cythria of Cloudfield. Each night before bed, my mother would tell me stories of Demacia's greatest heroes as she sharpened her sword. My dreams were full of adventures, and today I'll begin a story all of my own. And then it's kind of like Magic the Gathering where you get that early card and then you see her later on. Everyone I met, every journey I took taught me something new. But the more I learned and the stronger I became, the more I realized I had much further to go. And that was when she became a squire. Later on, you get to see her surrounded by horses charging into battle while she stands firm. Legends, tales, they were never just fiction to me. They were adventure calling my name. I left, Cal I left Cloudfield to discover my own adventure, only to find I would have many, and they were just beginning. Cythria, the Bold. So, she grew up. This it, you get, you literally get these cards in Legends of Runeterra, and you see this character develop over the course of time. Her entering Demacia, her learning to become a crown guard, and then finally leading her own charge. It, it's fucking it's it's amazing. I, I do have to say they put a lot of work in, um, and I like anything that's got. A rich uh lore lore yeah um i think that's one of the reasons why whenever they make games or something that's already established like batman or star wars or something like that i get so excited is because it's like there's so much i know that i'll be able to understand certain things in this you know yeah and this um, kind of it, i will admit it kind of said hey guess what here's all this good lore it just kind of slipped up on us because they didn't ever do big lore chunks like this they well, always I feel had like that's one of the things that the division not the division uh destiny uh did right there's a lot of lore to destiny i've heard uh, i've never really dug into it though i i no, feel like I, I would but it's one of those things where it's like it's always made me stop and go i i like to uh i like to dig through that a little bit i like to learn what's going on i like to understand my world um right now i'm watching a uh, a, one another trailer for Legends of Rune Terra that it is um, Darius from Noxus versus uh, Zed from Ionia, or formerly Ionia, I guess, because he is an he is one of the few exile, I guess. But um, holy shit, it is a very pretty, pretty animation. Um, I'll show you after, after all this, but uh, it's. A very interesting thing, and if I'm not mistaken, Darius just got his own volume of comics. So that's another thing I like when they expand lore through comics because it just gives me more comic books to buy. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, Darius. Um, it actually goes into his deep past, where it is basically leaning in and saying, "Hey, he wasn't always this angry, bloodthirsty, destructive." individual he was always a, a loving individual who cared for his brother before his brother took over the family business which was execution <laughs> but that it, it's it's always been the small stuff and then he's like yeah he used to uh, Darius used to have a love interest and then Darius unbeknownst to himself sent his only son unknown to himself out to out, out to battle a losing battle and lost him and hearing wind of this darius lost his mind huh. hey brother that guy that just died yeah who's your son what <laughs> pretty much and darius keeps going back like he he seems to have actual like ptsd and i'm like yes I love, I, I, well, I don't want to say I love it, but I, I enjoy the feeling of when characters have a problem, you know? They represent a real-life problem in a real way. Yes. And then you have, like, Noxus and 
uh, Demacia doing a slight handshake to handle a... Because they are competing angry factions against one another. But you had them do a slight ceasefire against a bigger threat for a temporary time. And it's, it, I could go on for hours trying to understand how much lore they've just put in over the last, god, six months since Legend of Runeterra hit beta, or alpha, I should say. But everything they've thrown into this it has been a lot. <laughs> it has been enough to kind of take in. And I do enjoy Legends of Runeterra. I just got to get back into it, though. Um, I do enjoy a couple of the control decks. It feels like Magic the Gathering, but a little bit easier to understand. It kind of has a good drawback to it. And while I'm on the subject of League and Riot Games, uh, Valorant, or Valorant, I should say, has been number one on t Twitch for quite some time, as far as most watched. Uh, it is CSGO with superpowers, and it plays quote-unquote better that's all i can really say about it it looks good it looks fine i think i got me a key but i never activated it i'm not i'm not too keen on playing another counter-strike variant you would just rather play counter-strike i i don't even want to play counter-strike like i no, i'm just done with it all together i'm interested but not that interested like it looks good it looks great it looks fantastic I'm excited for this to come out, but will I play it? Well, I mean, probably when everybody gets access to it, not like not like this very strange open beta thing. Did uh, You know how people were getting keys, right? Mm -mm. You have to watch a Twitch stream. You have to connect your Twitch and Riot accounts, and then you have to watch Twitch streaming. And yeah, there's then... a lot of games that give away free stuff, but uh, I, have, I mean, to make it be the only way, to get free stuff is through Twitch stream seems kind of shitty a little bit but then again it it's popular and it's getting people into the game i'm not True. that and it's helping out streamers yeah and it's also a free game so even even after the beta process it's going to be free so can't be, point. yeah can't be mad at it it's gonna be it i and during this time of an epidemic people are gonna need some stuff to do um okay, now you got some shitty shit don't you i got some more shitty shit mm. so people who are looking forward to this we had talked about a little bit i do believe uh, amazon's got its new uh mmo um called we, new world we which very kind of, briefly touched it yeah it feels like pirates meets magic and knights and stuff like that it looks interesting but um due to COVID 19 and things like that um it is being delayed yeah. Um, the lockdowns are making it hard for them to work on the game, I guess. It, so. I mean, understandable, but I'm sure yeah. they're doing stuff at home that they're going to basically bring into work when all this blows over. Yeah, it's so far it's only being delayed back to August 25th. So oh, That's not too um, bad. Yeah, it's not too far out. And as long as everything goes well, and that shouldn't change. So I like, I like a good MMO. I might check it out. Um, I would want to see more. I, I need to see things. I can't take things off of face value because pirates, cool. Um, I, I don't know. I would want to see it. Yeah. Um, I also got Obsidian's got a new survival game they're working on. Grounded. Will have, uh, yes, Grounded. That will have an arachnophobia mode that you can uh, use so that it gets rid of spiders. If you don't like spiders. I don't like spiders. No. I do have arachnophobia, but it's I, I can deal with them in video games. I mean, um, yeah. In person is a completely different situation. Throw your shoe at it. You kind of uh, vacuum like, it up and then immediately shake the vacuum around a billion times to kill its fucking ass, you know. <laughs> yikes. Um, I, mean, it, I mean, if it works. Yeah, so it's a weird weird decision but i'm sure i'm sure there's people out there that need it like i'm sure there's people out there that can't do those missions in skyrim that involve the giant spiders you know oh yeah yeah or like for instance there's a spider in uh fallen order that attacks when you have your back turned like it's in hiding until your back is turned oh and it's pretty big 
and it, it was like oh fuck when it came out and then i killed it so yay um it's a nasty looking fucker too speaking of nasty so, yeah. looking fuckers uh the playstation 5 controller <laughs> yeah that we can we can go that way <laughs> uh, look really quick that I was a real trick I before we like do that it. i just wanted to say grounded's the one we we did talk about grounded yes it's the one where you're like shrunken down honey i shrunk the kids like, yeah it's like honey i shrunk the kids the game yeah. you're like running around in like your yard but uh the the dual sense touch controller from sony i don't like it at all it's ugly as shit it, so i've got the specs i do like of. i do like it's design to a degree but not having actual buttons and the fact that it's so it looks wide it looks really it, wide it's ugly as shit so light bar has been moved it's got adaptive triggers which that actually seems kind of cool like you're gonna be able to feel if you're you're pulling a bow back things like that mm. uh it's got a haptic uh feedback i don't know what that means i don't uh, yeah, i don't know i would need to know USB C charging so it's the same i mean you won't need new co- uh, cords i guess no wait us no USB C is new the newer one the oval one. Oh, uh, okay so you will need new cords well it'll Maybe. come with it i'm sure yeah but now it's like all your extra cords aren't usable yeah. built-in microphone which is pointless unless you're playing a certain kind of game that might be coming back you were saying um socom might be coming back um might i I mean, other than that, I don't see any point because if you're a head, if you have a headset on, it's gonna have a mic most likely. Or if you're a streamer, you already have a mic. You don't need a shitty little mic in your controller. Yeah. Um, and then a new create button, which is supposed to make you know catching game moments a lot better, which is nice. Um, the cons, uh, sima- uh symmetrical thumbstick layout. Um. I, yeah, I guess I, I didn't really notice it when I was looking at um, the thumbsticks are really close and they're in the exact same spots to each other. They are symmetrical. That was the word I was trying to say before. <laughs> it was symmetrical. I'm, I'm like, I, I have a picture of it and I'm like putting my hands up like a like a dummy trying to figure out, oh, how is this going to work? And I'm like, this is this looks very uncomfortable. Um, And the fact that it OK, I don't know if you I don't think we touched on this. It It, it doesn't have actual buttons it is yeah touch oriented and that makes me really agitated because as a fighting game aficionado that that's a that's a not good that is that is something that is gonna be very much frowned upon as you're trying to do anything it will showcase you're not inputting proper like how are you supposed to do okay let's say you're a D-pad fighter, and you're trying to work a freaking quarter circle. Does it work as it's intended? That I don't, I don't like it. I don't. Yeah. Um, also, the light bar has the potential to drain its built-in battery because they're still doing that thing. Um, That's gross. I own both a PlayStation Four and an Xbox One, and I've got the Xbox One uh schematics here or not sorry not one the xbox series x controller schematics here too for you guys so um they did an eight directional d-pad on their new controller rather than making the buttons not buttons (laughs) hang on let me take a look let me see what the xbox one x controller looks like it looks it looks almost identical to the ones they've already got out there it's got one new button yeah the one in the middle yeah okay um impulse triggers um the new button in the middle is the share button, so you don't have to press home and hit, you know, Record all that, that shit. Okay. Yeah. Um, you've got the asymmetrical thumb uh, thumbstick layout, which feels so much better than doing that weird one that they're going to do on the PlayStation controller. Um, and then compa- it's compatible with the Xbox One, so your controller will be able to, the new controller can be used on the old console. Well, okay. That's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So where... We're going to have the fight between PlayStation people and Xbox people. The controller still runs on double A's, which oh, means God. I don't have to buy anything new to make my controller work like all the cords I'm going to buy for the PlayStation 5 controller. Plug and plays will probably still work, things like that. Huh. My batteries I already own will still work. <laughs> I Xbox use needs batteries. I use rechargeables. That's I haven't it. bought new batteries for my controller in four or five years and i bought that rechargeable thing and i just as soon as i'm done playing i throw it in the in the little stand and it charges it 
I have yeah. n- I have no negative here. Um. Also, my PlayStation controller dies fast as fuck from day one. I know a lot of people are like, "Well, you probably use it a lot." Charger, right? No, no, no. Day one, opening that fucker up, it died the first night. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Mm. And so now you add in the fact that the new controller is gonna have a light bar and a built-in battery. Batteries build up memories. When the memory on that battery goes to shit, you can't and it can't it. hold a charge anymore. You have to buy a new controller, or or just keep it perma plugged in. Yeah, which it's 2020. I don't want to be fucking plugged into my console. Yes. I do have one wired controller that has taken such a fucking beating from people tripping on the damn cord. I and the only reason I have it still is because it's like it's the media controller now. It's like we're watching Xbox. You know, that like, like that's one of the things the Xbox controllers do. If you're not using the wireless controller, it shuts off to save battery life, as where the PlayStation 4 controller stays on, unless you shut it off yourself. Correct. That thing never shuts off, which also fucks you on battery life. So, if we're watching Netflix, and suddenly it's like, are you still watching? Because Netflix wants to judge me that I haven't done anything in the last four hours. Um, I don't want to have to go turn my controller on. I just reach over to my plugged-in one and hit A. It's my media controller now. And yeah, with the PlayStation controller, I could do that, but I've now killed my controller by having it sit there. The new controller having a light bar, you're just going to burn through your battery life even faster. I don't see anything good about the new PlayStation controller except maybe the triggers, but the Xbox controller has those as well. Yeah. And the Xbox controller looks good. Yeah, I mean, they, if it ain't broke. Yeah. Um, does this have the sensor pad in the middle on the PlayStation controller? I, it looks like it does. Okay. So that's still going to be a thing. I wonder yeah. if they're still going to do the thing where, like, you can, like, move the controller, hold it steady, things like that. Oh, this, uh, six axis? Yeah. Mm. Not seeing it. Oh, yeah, touchpad, yes. Here we go. Touchpad, yes. Uh, both controllers are going to do 35 millimeter jacks. Do it's only compatible with PlayStation 5 from what we can tell. Well, yeah. Doesn't say anything about six axis. So yeah. PlayStation buttons are touch pads for face buttons, X, O, triangle, and square, two triggers, two bumpers, create button options, D pad, and two thumbsticks. Xbox buttons are Xbox Home, menu, view. That's the lines and the squares. Yeah. That's what they're actually called. I still call them start and select because I'm old. Uh, four face buttons that are actual buttons, A, B, X, and Y. Two triggers, two bumpers, share, D-pad, and two thumbsticks. Okay. Yikes. I like the new share button. Oh, also the um, LT, RT, LB, RB mm-hmm. uh, triggers and bumpers mm-hmm. on Xbox are textured for your thumb. Oh. They got little bumps for gripping and whatnot. Well, that, I mean neutral like my, my oh, hands kind of rest up there and they kind of work fine but i'm sending you a photo i didn't see what the triggers looked like for the playstation controller this controller just gets uglier the more i look at it oh that is weird versus i'm gonna send you the xbox one right now the xbox it just as it has that like i can see the lip yeah that okay that actually looks really nice Dude, this First... controller just gets uglier and uglier the more I look at it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on over at Sony, but Sony needs to kind of fix what they're they're breaking. Yeah, I mean, especially a company that had basically said the whole "if it ain't broke, don't fix it" thing, and why their controller hasn't changed since the PlayStation Two. And this really. is a big change because, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, that okay, that image right there. Th- mm. That's not. That's not. Those don't look like touch sensors. Those look uh, like actual buttons. Yeah, so they, they've got another image of the controller from the back, and the buttons look different, despite their specs even saying they're touch buttons. These look like clickable buttons. So I'm wondering if there's going to be more than one controller. I, I want this. This I would I would like the quote-unquote legacy controller. But then again, I, so far I'm not sold on the PlayStation 5 or the Series X as of right Dude, this minute. No, I'm sold on the X. The issue is going to be financing. I am yeah. not sold on the five at all. There's nothing good about the five other than Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. And because maybe it might even go cross cross platform at that point. Series X is even saying that it'll go 
backwards compatible to the one, the 360, and the original Xbox. As oh. where the PlayStation Five is only going to go back to the PlayStation Four, and that's only for about a hundred thousand games, not even the full library. Oh. Well, okay. Yeah. Jesus. So, ugly shit. Ugly shit. Ugly, ugly mugs. For... <laughs> I got a few more gaming things here. Okay. Whether you're a fan, whether you're not a fan, we're not going to get into the whether or not it's worth it or not. Uh, Fallout 76, for those that still play or those that might want to get back into it, has got a new update coming. It's called Wastelanders, and it'll finally bring human NPCs into the game. Finally. After, um, what, two years? Roughly, yeah. Um, it, uh, it'll it bring that as well as new stuff to the Atom store, I'm sure. Um, and uh, some cool looking stuff, like a Thunderdome looking type of thing. Um, raiders, all kinds of shit. So, and uh, a cause for why there are Scorchers. I think that's already a thing. Well, okay. Uh, an established idea of how to stop them? Because they were talking yeah, about how the concept they were is Don't let the Scorchers spread. I'm sure there's going to be some missions of protecting people and keeping them from becoming Scorchers. Which I mean, cool. That means I, it's a it's a good outbreak. I I like I like a good outbreak. That's funny because uh, it's funny you said because I was actually you know looking around on Twitter watching people lose their fucking minds about Fallout seventy six doing something, and one person's like, "Get rid of the scorchers," and I'm like, "Why? It ain't like, that bad? It's something to fight, you know." But there's a trailer. Um, picked a really good song for it. And- Got yeah. a good feel. Check it, it, out. it looked good. Um, if if the lip syncing was supposed to be as it was supposed to be, it was not supposed to be. But then again, voice acting was still good. I, I, the I'm, voice acting was good. The lip syncing was definitely off. I noticed that too. Yeah. I don't know if that's this trailer. I don't know if that's going to be how it is in the game. Hopefully it's not how it is in the game, but it was definitely off in this trailer. But even still, it looked good. It looked Fallout, uh, we'll say Fallout 3-esque. Like, it had a lot of stiff animations, but it looked good. There's, yeah, there's a lady in it whose face is way too small for her head. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, when you have full reign on how to create a character, I mean, people can make their characters look like that, so. Yeah, I want to scribble, Bibby. Uh, do you have any more gaming news? Because I got a few more things. Feed the Bibby. Um, I've got but up up shoe news. Okay, we can do that real quick, and we'll go back to some gaming news. But up, up, shoe news. All right, so I've got three, one of which makes me cringe, and I'm going to get rid of it right now. Earlier this week, you gave me an image of <laughs> some very interesting Nikes. The Air Jordan custom-made translucent orange Air Jellies. You can see through them. And it looks like it's made out of recyclable material, which I think is kind of what's going on with it. Yeah, maybe. Um I you could see your foot through it and that's what I think is what really makes us kind of cringe about it. I can see an appeal for it. It kind of reminds me of the the mid 90s when everything was translucent and you can see through it. But as of right now, in this point in time, no. Please, no. Stop. Please. Uh, the other shoe news I have... Let's... let's I'm going to hit the... I'm going to hit that lime green one. Uh, McDonald's and Damien Lillard dip with Adidas. These look god-awful. They do. Uh, they are slime green with... Uh, nice white stripe along the sole uh and a bit of an orange tab i wouldn't mind these if these were nickelodeon shoes like if they if they branded themselves as nickelodeon i'd be like oh hell yeah it would make more sense yeah but these are marketing themselves as mcdonald's and it it looks as said i i can see it being a fucking nickelodeon i don't like it i do not like it It, the third shoe we have though is not too bad. The third shoe we have is a nice deep purple for uh, the Jumpstart playoffs with the Zoom Freak All Bros 4, and they are promoting NBA 2K20. Um, yeah. I only have just that one image I showed you. Um, 
they, it's like a what's that purple or a blue it's more purple there's okay. deep purple and it kind of has a gradient from purple to pink to the very front being an orange has a nice little jelly covering that goes over the very front before it starts up to swoop um and then on the main frame of it it is purple with a very interesting pink design um yeah. these are and nice then the tongue's black. and then the tongue is pure black with i don't know what logo that is but i'll assume it's a popular logo yeah i don't like know all i think it, i think that's the all bros logo probably i mean it looks like an a yeah but uh it it is very nice it is it looks well textured i um and then i believe on the bottom of the the sole of or the the bottom of the shoe itself it says uh i am Hold on, let me get the direct quote so I'm not looking dumb. Uh, I am my father's legacy. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, go for it. I am my father's legacy. That's a powerful set of words. Anything else? Uh, oh, no, that's it for shoe news. I was just, uh, I was going to say, uh, out of the three we had, these are the best looking. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so back over to gaming. Uh, do you know anything about NASCAR? Very minimal. Well, there's a racer, Bubba Wallace, who, while everyone's under lockdown and stuff like that, mm -hmm. was playing a NASCAR game. Okay. Um, and he crashed and was very upset and said, uh, peace out on his uh, Twitter. Um and just stop playing. It looks like the crash was possibly caused by another driver that was also playing. Um, but he just killed the stream and was done. The problem is, is he had an active sponsor while doing this stream. Um, he's sponsored by a company called Blue uh, EMU. They do like a, a pain oh. medication. Yeah, Blue EMU. Yeah, Blue yeah. EMU? Okay. Yeah, so... When a sponsor pays you to do something and you don't do it, they kind of get upset. And so they messaged him to let him know that uh, they are interested in drivers, not quitters. And they're pulling his sponsorship Oof. Um, from both virtual and his actual NASCAR racing team. Oof. Uh... Yeah. So they're out. Um, I, I mean, it makes sense because, like, we paid you and you streamed for a couple of seconds and then called it because you got mad. Like, could you imagine if you just stopped mid-race? Yeah, no. I mean, unless, like, you were starting to get, like, super fucking dizzy or, or you know, you had a medical problem. Yeah, a medical I could see thing. it, but if you're rage quitting... Rage quitting because you're not winning the race? No. So. Especially a video game one. I think if you crashed in the real world, I'm pretty sure your sponsors are gonna be like, well... That sucks. On to the I next one. Okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. Dust yourself off. You'll be all right. Get back in. Next race it. will happen. Yeah. But so. you crash in a video game. Mm, we're back in it again, boys. Yeah. That's pretty much how my mentality was with uh, Cuisine Royale. Oh, we lost. Mm, back in it again. That's the one thing I will give Cuisine Royale as far as battle royales. Like as soon as you queue up, you're right back in. There's no dropping anywhere. You're dropped in already. <laughs> uh, I didn't experience it, so I wouldn't know. Well, they just I think they're releasing soon on Xbox if you happen to want to. Yeah, I think I'm out of the Battle Royale thing, personally. Fair enough. So, um, furthermore, when it comes to new uh, game stuff, um, Blizzard says it's too early to know whether or not BlizzCon 2020 will happen. So they're not canceling yet. But they're not confirming either. Blizzard better cancel because they released a broken ass champ for fucking uh, Overwatch. That's a reason to cancel an entire convention. Yes. Okay, someone's salty. Uh, yes. You're going. You know, you're Overwatch going to... isn't their only game, right? World of Warcraft is still doing well. I get Shadowlands, it. Shadowlands, Diablo Four. Diablo. Well, Diablo Four is long away, but uh, it'll be a thing. Yeah, and, and they're not going to remaster Diablo Two, so. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they're saying that it's still too early to tell. Mm. 
That's all. I mean, you weren't going anyways. <laughs> I, but, I mean, I'm always interested in what BlizzCon has to offer. I'm not going to, you know, be like, Blizzard's a bad company. No, Blizzard's a bad company because they don't listen to how things go. They say, this is in pro play. This is how pro plays work. Let's not listen to the low end of it because the low end doesn't know how to play like pros. And so well, they release a broken ass champ like Echo and then royally screw up the entire meta because she's quote unquote the game changer, but Mercy still can't get better healing than Zenyatta. Like, where's where's the justice? Well, I mean, I'm already pissed off with them back when they years ago, just with the you guys have phones, don't you? Shit. Uh, you yeah. Know? And then the whole thing with the uh, Chinese individual who, yeah. during the uh, riots... That was, was bullshit. Yeah. So, I mean, Blizzard has a very interesting way of doing things. They have a very interesting way of saying, we don't give a fuck about you. There you <laughs> go, yeah. That's, that's... Well, that's all I have for gaming. Everything else is uh, TV and stuff like that. So Okay, hit me. If you have any more gaming stuff you, you want to drop, we can. Otherwise, we can move on. Um, I think that was everything. Let me do a quick once over our thing. Do, 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 there do, was do. one more video you sent me, uh, Valorant. I, already, I mean, I kind of briefly talked about Valorant. I mean, it is and in the... Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh, right. The remakes. Uh, Resident Evil 3 and Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, also kind of debuted over the last week and both look and play pretty well, apparently. I wouldn't know. I don't own either one, but um, I did show you a video of Aerith having a voice actress say shit. Yep. And that was about it. Uh, as far as Valorant, um, it is going to be in the same vein and lore as all the league stuff i just don't know where it's gonna fit in so i mean i i want to learn more but at the same time i i have to take a step back i've got other things to think about but then lastly there was google google stadia being free yeah google stadia is going to be free for the next month uh two months and for people with gmail accounts yeah and i'm like that's super neat but ill efficient to people like me I think you might be able to get it. I don't know how. I don't know how this whole thing's gonna work. Considering I, think I mean, I have Gmail accounts. Hold on. But... Let, let's see. Google Stadia. I'm gonna try and sign up for it right now as we're speaking. So go ahead and start up your news. Okay. Um. So a simple thing actually for a, a lot of businesses are suffering from everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, including our local comic book shops who can't have customers in the stores can't do curbsides can't really do anything other than shipping stuff and well, people get nervous when you ship comic books understandable well company scout comics um has kind of decided to do something to help out with that um they're doing a thing where anything you buy uh direct from the scout store 50 percent of it is sent to your local comic shop you tell them what comic shop yo that is strong that is some really strong ability right there so you place the name of your local comic shop you'd like to support in the note or memo box of your order, and they will reach out to them every Friday and pay them via PayPal. Uh, you can also email them at store. Uh, it's uh, store at scoutcomics.com with the name of your shop and your order number. Um, and then they ended with their little thing was to stay safe. everyone. Um, Scout's got a lot of comics. Let me pull up just some of their big titles for you guys. Anyone wondering? Um, they've got a town called Elsewhere, Adventures of Byron. Um, let's see some of their other big ones. Uh, Crucified, Cyber Spectre. Uh, yes, Spectre. Um, let's see. I don't read a lot of Scout, so uh, Headless, Heavenly Blues. Um, Long Live Pro Wrestling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Midnight Sky. They've got a little bit of everything for everyone. They've got stuff that's kind of goopy. They got stuff that's kind of serious. Uh, Smoke Town, Snow White, Zombie Apocalypse. Um, let's see, I'm trying to. Wow, find there is a lot of very interesting things. Tinkers um, of the Wasteland. There, there are some. Wasteland. There are some covers that I'm just super interested in, just getting the covers of, such as Forever Maps. Um, yeah. I like a little bit of everything. So salmon is talking gun. <laughs> like what? I so 
does the gun talk to him or is he crazy? I want to I mean, know. You'll have to read it to find it out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah. They, they've also got merchandise. Um, so if you're like, you are a scout fan, they got bottles, they got uh, cozies for your drink. Yay. Um, shirts, hats, keychains, all kinds of shit. So go support a company that's supporting the brick and mortar shops because, you know, that's important. We can't lose those. There's yeah. already so many that have had to close just from this stuff. If all of them got to close down, I don't I, I don't think we're going to ever have a big outcry for anything anymore. Yeah. And that's going to suck. That's going to really suck. Because then so, comic book artists are going to go to where everyone else is going right now. Porn. I mean, some of them can't even do comic books, right? So doing porn would be very bad. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right, but I'm just so. saying that's where most of the artists are kind of leaning toward. Like, as soon as the, the storyboarding is all done and they're all, you know, getting a comic book set, if they don't yeah. if they don't finalize it and get it into actual print, the, 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 where the, where's their money, you know? Very like, true. Oh. I mean, digital sales are still a thing, and they're doing all right. Yeah. Support your local places. Yes. Now, uh, do you have the stuff on Stadia, or do you want me to keep going? Uh, I it says get two months free. Download Google Chrome, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I nothing. I would need to throw in all the information, and I I'm just not gonna do that right okay. now. But so I, I guess basically, if you have a controller that can connect to your computer, that's how it would work. Yeah, yeah or your uh, phone, because apparently it can work on your phone too. I don't need to play more shit on my phone. You're right, but I'm just saying it's available. So, uh. I've got the animation lineup coming for um, Adult Swim. Uh, Rick and Morty, May 3rd. The Shivering Truth, May 10th. J.J. Villard's Fairy Tales, May 10th. YOLO Crystal Fantasy, summer of 2020. Dream Corp LLC, this summer. Robot Chicken, this summer. 12 Ounce uh, Mouse, this summer. Wait, we're getting more 12 Ounce Mouse? Yep, this summer. (sighs) I take it that's a bad thing. It's an it. okay. It's an okay thing. It is very much a. It's an acid trip with a low budget. I I would be honest. I hate a lot of Adult Swim stuff. There are some Adult Swim things that kind of came out of it. Um, full, fully coolly, uh, Cowboy Bebop, Trigun. Oh, but those weren't um, created by Adult Swim, though. Oh, okay. You want things that were um fucking Aqua Teen Hunger Force was pretty good. I'll C-Lab. give you Aqua Teen. I'll give you Venture Bros. I'll give you Robot Chicken. Uh, C Lab Twenty Twenty One. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Yeah, I'll I'll take it. But like, Lauren once woke me up because she couldn't sleep and she was watching Adult Swim, and it was that fucking too many cooks thing, and it was just, it drove me insane. Absolutely cooks. drove me fucking insane. Yeah. Um, the rest of this list is Tender Tushis, uh, this summer. Uh, Gimaseto Machu Picchu fall this fall. Um, I this one's partially cut off. But I think it's supposed to be Kennedy. Uh, Tartakusvisky Primal this fall. Uh, Tigtone this fall and Lazarus Wolf this fall. All right, Adult Swim fans, that's that's the current lineup. Um, Rick and Morty, May third, that's the big one. Uh, oh, let's see, uh, Candyman has its new date. Um, it is being moved from June twelfth to September twenty fifth, just in case theaters aren't open back up come June. Well, shit. Um, hopefully theaters can be back open by that point. Um. If not, I'm worried that maybe this movie might get screwed over. We know we're gonna. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not trying to let you lean forward and say, hey, we're gonna be okay. No, it's not gonna be okay. I mean, it it really, it, it just depends on how quickly science can work. That's what it's gonna come down to. And you can't rush science. Science. So for the people that are stuck in the house, um, Sci-Fi is going to do a Battlestar Galactica and Xena marathon starting this Thursday. No, those Um, are not short 
fucking series. Xena. Let's see. I don't know how long Battlestar Galactica uh, is, but Xena has six seasons alone. Um. Okay. Uh, six seasons, 134 episodes of Xena, and Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, Battlestar Galactica has 76 episodes and a two-part miniseries. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Four seasons for that 76 episodes. Jesus so, Christ. Not only will they uh be doing this marathon for April, um, you will have. It being hosted by, uh, how do you say her name? Uh, mm-hmm. Tricia Helfer, uh, mm-hmm. who was number six in Battlestar, and Lucy Lawless, Xena herself. Um, I love Lucy Lawless. I follow her on Twitter. She is an amazing woman, and she's the reason why I'm excited about this. Um, also, you can watch these shows on the Sci Fi and NBC Use uh, app. Um, I think they're free, but if they aren't, if you have cable, I think they're free then. Um, I'm so new- you can watch I'm, them. I don't know. I'm neutral. I'm neutral. Like I would, I would probably watch the the starting of it. It's uh, April twentieth. So I mean, that's what. What is uh, it's Monday? I mean, sure. Why not? I'll probably pop it on my phone. I don't see why not. Starting on April twentieth, the network will commence a nonstop three day marathon of Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, uh, I do believe the Xena section starts this coming Thursday. Oh. Will air sci-fi every uh, Thursday morning and afternoon. Begin. Uh, yeah. So what you're telling me is okay, April sixteenth. But yeah. holy shit, holy shit! So every. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. Yeah, I and I'm excited just to see Xena again. Um, I've always hoped they would bring this show back. Um, it was because of this show that she shows up in Ash versus the Army of Darkness because Bruce Campbell shows up in episodes of Xena. Does he re- wait really? Yeah, he has a character in Xena, so he shows up every now and then. He's one of her friends. Oh, my God. All y'all so nerds. They, they did an Ash vs. the Evil Dead comic that crosses over Xena, uh, where Ash drops in and is mistaken for Bruce Campbell's character. Oh, my God. In the show. And there's, like, a bunch of nonsense that ensues. But, yeah, he had, you know, popped in for certain episodes of her show, and so she popped in for his show. Okay. And I want to say that the show also crossed over with Hercules, if I remember correctly. Oh, with, um, oh, God, what is his name? I don't remember. I got it. Okay. Uh, Kevin Sorbo. There you go. So, yeah. um, The chin. uh, Yeah, the chin. Uh, Lots of fun stuff there. Um, For SNL fans, uh, the show is actually going to return this weekend uh, with episodes of uh, going through on a remote sketch. Um, They're going to kind of each do their own little thing through the ability of the Internet. So um, be sure to check it out. I'm I'm hoping that they manage to build some very interesting sets. Yeah, it'll be um, 1130 p.m. on the 11th. So good. it's normal time slot. Good shit. And then Funko just announced uh, five new pops. You've got a baby Groot figure that um, it's supposed it's actually made out of wood, right? Uh, wood Groot Funko Pop. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see if it's actually made of wood. That's what I'm trying uh, to figure out. The grain, yeah, uh, and just like real wood, the grain design varies on each figure, so no two are are identical. Oh, say so it says just like real woods. So I think it's still vinyl. Yeah, but it, even still, it it's not going to be the same though. That's cool. Um, and then we got Mewtwo, who looks a little funky, but you know he's a Funko Pop. They're supposed to look funky. I guess. Uh, there's a new Eevee Pop. Um, she looks okay. She looks okay. Whatever. They. Peach. Uh, there's a new Pichu one. Uh, I don't know. I didn't really care for Pichu in the. the uh, uh, cartoon or in the movie anyways so this mm. one's all right but the last one is actually really cool i like um, it it's the great ape uh goku uh in all his glory when he gets big um, and angry yeah it doesn't say if it's a normal size pop or one of those bigger ones though um no it doesn't tell us let me look at the box uh the box doesn't showcase it either so i'm assuming it's just a regular oh no six inch supersized pop okay cool so it's one of the supersized ones cool um and then 
they're also going to be doing some Marvel Zombies stuff, from what I understand. Um, they're still in the point that they're just drawings. Um, so they're going to have Mysterio with the head broken open, and you can see the, it's a giant brain. Didn't they already um, do some, though? I think they already did some, uh, but I think these are the like, new ones being added to it. Ah. Uh. Uh, they're doing a Black Panther where, like, his leg is turned to, like, mush, basically. They've got a Wolverine with a nice, like, glowing green wherever he's uh, missing parts of his flesh. Um, the they've got a Deadpool that's, like, waving with his hand because his hand's cut off. Like, he's holding his hand waving. He's got a sword stabbed through him. they got a Gambit where his eyeball's popping out. they got a Hulk that's pretty cool. He's uh, got a lot of ripped skin and kind of green muscle. Kind of Super Mutant-like. A little bit. So, new Funko stuff. Keep an eye out for it. Mm -hmm. um, and my last one isn't a typical story for us. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add in before we call it? Nope, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay. So, for anyone that doesn't know what this is, we'll, we'll kind of break it down for you. Um, there's coding for computers is a thing. You all know that. There's different languages for it. Um, so, some programs run off of different languages. There's an old language that was developed back in 1959 called COBOL, C-O-B-O-L. Um, it stands for Common Business Oriented Language. It was mostly used in the 60s, 70s, and even the 80s, but has fallen by the wayside as better and newer things have come out. Turns out New Jersey may have dropped the ball a bit because there are more than 362,000 New Jersey residents filing unemployment and their machines are 40 years old or their mainframe is 40 years old. Um, so they need programmers that know COBOL to volunteer. I don't know if they're offering anything because they did say volunteer, but they're looking for people that can do this like lost programming language. Like, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure there are people who still use it. I mean, some languages can be multifaceted. They can be slightly interchangeable. Is there? I'm I'm curious to know if there is a way to just straight up change the language of those programs to C sharp, JavaScript. I don't know, mm. but if there is, I'm assuming you would still need to know COBOL to do it. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, mm, maybe. Uh, despite the dwindling number of COBOL programs, uh, a 2017 report showed that uh, 220 billion lines of COBOL are used per day still. 40% are baking systems that are built on COBOL, and 95% of ATM swipes rely on COBOL code. So oh, our government kind of needs to get their shit together and stop using such an old thing that no one knows. Um, the issue that they're saying is it's not that it's old and so it, like, it doesn't work well. That's not the problem. The issue is most coders were not alive when COBOL was last big. Like, yeah. Most coders are closer to our age and COBOL started dying out in the 80s. So mm. you're talking just barely with you being born and me not being born for a little while. Yeah. Um, and then we're pretty close to coder age. And some, in fact, some coders are even younger than us. So if you happen to know this, because either you're you're one of those people who are like, I want to understand all things, or maybe you were a coder back when this was a thing. Uh, New Jersey could use some help. A lot of help. I mean, a lot of places can use a lot of help. Yeah. So, um, check it out. Uh, that's all I have for today. That is all I also have for today. So, stay safe out there. Um, I don't think I have a good coffee pun for today. Okay, well, then we're just going to end it with a, a good old have a good night. See you, Wait. Latte. I, I, I got one. Sorry. Oh, you got one? Okay. Yeah, I got one. Okay. Um, I, I know it's a little hard out there with this quarantine and all, but don't go too stir crazy. That was pretty good. Thank you. That was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, last minute thing. Hmm. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Have, have a good, good night. One.